Chapter 3 It had been a day and change since I dragged my ass out of the ditch. A day and change since I couldn't stop thinking about her face. A day and change spent sleeping off the mother of all hangovers, taking a break only to piss, shit, and kill the last of my emergency supply of alcohol. If you're going through hell, why take pit stops? Valdez, a scrappy private investigator with internal wiring that somehow prohibited detectable emotion over psychic wavelengths, called multiple times, no doubt a wellness check from a concerned friend. Still, I let it go to voicemail each time. If you're going through hell, there's no point dragging someone else along for the ride. It was Sunday morning when I felt a distant pull that was getting progressively stronger. Fear. Panic. Trepidation. I was sprawled across the too small mattress in the back room when the bastard knocked on the door. He either didn't notice the kitschy, go-away doormat at the steps of the trailer, or he intentionally ignored it. The asshole's fear and trepidation made my chest tighten, and I groaned as I tried to ignore the pull. He was young, desperate, but determined. Something bad was going to happen. Honestly, it smelled like a steamy pile of not my problem. More knocking on the cheap fiberglass rattled the loose screen door behind it. My brain ached as I tried to make it useful. I needed booze to deal with people, and I was pretty sure I was all tapped out. Thanks to the asshole for my Friday night adventure at Dockside, I didn't have any cash to buy more booze. And then there was the lot rental fee for my trailer. That wasn't due for another two weeks, so I'd have to eventually rustle something up. The kid at the door needed me, which meant a possible job. Best I could figure it, I had two choices. Indulge the kid and maybe take the job, or get rid of the kid and go back to sleep. The pole twanged like an angry piano wire, sending vibrations of apprehension and fear deep into my chest, which only pissed me off more. Fuck this kid. In my line of work, a job was never too far away. When the nuts hit the gravel, Valdez never failed to hook me up with something. I could afford another day in bed, but the kid wasn't going away by himself. I groaned and pushed myself up. A cramped bathroom gave way to the rest of the trailer. A kitchenette with a small pantry, fridge, and a sink on one side, a futon, and a small television on the other. I checked the fridge for any booze that might have escaped my wrath. Another knock. Mr. Owens, please, sir. Hold your fucking cunt, I barked, pulling open the pantry door. I reached into each shelf and dumped the contents on the floor. Cups of noodles, single-serve mac and cheese, tuna packets, stale crackers and hot sauce. No booze. More knocking, more pull. Fuck me, I growled. Just a little bit of anything would do. I went through the counter drawers. One had a handful of plastic takeout utensils, and the other was full of random papers, batteries, and other junk. I dug a hand deeper into the junk drawer and reached around to the back, hoping to find a forgotten mini bottle of Jack Daniels. Nothing. More knocking. Another twang of the pole, and I realized the kid's anxiety was fueling my own panicked search for alcohol. Goddamn thin fiberglass walls. An idea blossomed deep below the mounting desperation I felt coming from outside, and I spun around to the bathroom. In the corner, behind the tiny sink, there was a quarter of green liquid mouthwash sitting at the bottom of a crusty bottle. I grabbed it and looked at the label. A little over 20% alcohol. Knock, knock. Pull. Panic. Anxiety. Somebody fucked up. All right, fuck. This was a new low. I spun the cap and went bottoms up, the mint-flavored paint thinner burning a line of fire down my throat. Sweet fucking Christ on a crucifix. The tension in my chest eased just a little, but a little was all I needed. I wiped my watery eyes and went to the door, throwing it open just as the kid was about to knock again. He wore a preppy purple polo with one of those alligators on the breast, and jeans in that dumb rail-skinny fashion. He stared at me in a mix of surprise and horror, and if the roles had been reversed, I'd probably have the same reaction seeing me on the back end of a bender to end all benders. I hacked, clearing my burning throat. If you're here to share the good news, you can shove it straight up your fucking twat. Please, sir. The kid's anxiety was making him stumble over himself. I, I was told, um, uh, oh, oh, here. He held out a six-pack of beer like it was some kind of offering. I turned my red-eyed squint from the booze to the kid and then back again. <sighs> I grunted. Really wish I had known about the six-pack before I guzzled mouthwash. The kid looked like he was going to piss himself. I nodded to the pair of chairs sitting between my trailer and the lakeside. The kid followed my gaze and then jerked a little as he processed my direction. 
When he turned his head, I saw a small tattoo at the base of his skull, partially obscured by a shit buzz cut. It was a small circle with three prominent dots inside it. I don't know, maybe he had a fetish for punctuation. The kid started for the chairs, and I whistled through my teeth to stop him. Beer, I said, holding out a hand. Confused, the kid looked down at the six-pack in his hands. Oh, 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 sorry, yeah. He handed over the booze, and I immediately cracked a bottle, gulping it down before sitting in the lawn chair. The kid sat down across from me, and I felt my senses settle. I reached for the second bottle, twisted the cap, and tossed it into the dirt under the trailer. Uh, uh, Mr. Owens. Mm. Quiet. I drank half the beer while eyeballing the kid. He was twitchy. I didn't like it. But he brought beer, and all things considered, that seemed like a fair trade at the moment. Booze in exchange for some semblance of listening. The beer was cheap and fizzy, and as the edge began to ease, I figured maybe I didn't have to pay much attention, just tossing a nod and a mm-hmm every now and then. Plus, he was twitchy, and twitchy people annoy me. As he talked, I took another drink and glanced sideways at the door to my 32-foot, seen-better-days pull-behind trailer with orange, swoopy decals that were either faded or in various stages of failure. I wish to hell I had found a couple of spare minis. Beer takes the edge off, but whiskey numbs the pain. I've always had a tendency toward cheap alcohol. At first, it was because I got more bang for my buck, an essential motivator in today's gig economy. But then, after the whole empathy problem became a permanent fixture in daily life, the cheap stuff played more to my masochistic tendencies, burning my throat with stinging punishment before succumbing to the eventual numbness. The twitchy boy had grown silent and I cocked an eyebrow at him, tossing him an obligatory, uh-huh, too little, a little too late. Are, are you even paying attention to me? Typical. Always about him. I fucking hate these Gen Z ankle biters. Of course. I lied with an indifferent wave of my beerless hand. I brought the other hand up and took a long, necessary drink. I swished for a moment before swallowing, trying to recall what he had been talking about. You're part of a club. Then you got out. The twitchy boy stared at me as if I was supposed to be saying something more. Well, fuck this bespectacled jackass with a bad haircut. He came to me. Get to the point or get the fuck out. I killed the current bottle, tossed it aside, and cracked a third. The twitchy, four-eyed, Gen Z cock muncher shot to his feet with some kind of self-righteous indignation. Y you know what, Mr. Owens? The little shit asked, attempting to assert himself despite his wavering voice. You came very highly recommended, and, and, and I thought for sure you would be the answer to my problem, but, but obviously this was a mistake, a, 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 a huge a, a, fucking mistake. The walking tit turned in a huff, I shit you not, and stormed off down the path around the lake. Huffy indignation aside, it was the other thing that he said that pricked me. God fucking damn it. Wait, I growled. He stopped and glanced over his shoulder. I don't know if this was the reaction he had hoped for, and honestly, I was getting too buzzed to care. Who sent you? I asked. The walking, talking twat twisted around, pushing those fucking awful hipster glasses up his nose. No, uh, Josephine Watson? God damn every single inch of that shit-licking cunt bag straight to fucking hell. The overgrown beanpole of a toddler got a shitty look of hope in his eyes. I really hate that fucking look. Does that, uh, change your, uh, position on things? Shut the fuck up, I said. He took a step back toward the beat-up lawn chairs. Uh, please, Mr. Owens, I really, really need your help. I said, shut up, I growled again, and sit down. The fucking twit actually had to fight a smile as he dropped back into the chair. I needed a moment to think.